All right, a very good evening and welcome to another edition of Know Your Government, the show which seeks to open the lid of government and take you right into the heart of government and its agencies to help you understand how your government works for you. And tonight on this special edition of Know Your Government, we want to talk about electricity, transmission, and you and I know the importance of electricity in our lives and to help us understand how electricity, the importance of electricity, and where government comes in the midst of all this. I'm joined by uh, the Kenya Electricity Transmission Company Managing Director, Buana Baraza Fernandez, who is going to help us understand where Ketraco, what is Ketraco, and what it does in its day-to-day -day operations that directly impact into your lives. Karibu sana, Buana Baraza Fernandez, thank and thank you, thank you, you much. so much for your time tonight. We don't take it for granted. Thank you. Let us uh, start right at the heart of it. And uh, hypothetically speaking, if somebody in our country tonight has never heard about Ketraco, what would you tell them Ketraco is? What, what, what really is the Kenya Electricity Transmission Company? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Ketraco is um, a parastatal under the Ministry of Energy, mm -hmm. uh, wholly owned by governments. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were incorporated in the year 2008, mm -hmm. 2nd of December, mm -hmm. and we started operations on the 1st of January 2009. Okay. Um, our key mandate is um, to plan, uh, design, construct, operate, and maintain high voltage uh, transmission lines okay. Okay. and regional connectors. Okay. Where high voltage, we're talking about uh, a minimum of 132 kilovolts of power. Mm. Uh, up to 500 HVDC. Okay. But Bonabaraza, if, if, if you talk about power in our country today, most people will talk about Kenjan. Most mm -hmm. people will talk about KPLC. Mm -hmm. So I understand all those three are important, including Ketraco, but what is the difference between Ketraco uh, from, from Kenya Power and from, from Kenjan? Now, when you look at the entire supply chain of power, there are three main components. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is generation of power. Mm -hmm. And generation is largely done by Kenjin mm -hmm. uh, together with the IPPs, independent mm -hmm. power producers. Mm -hmm. uh, where Kenjin, uh, they do uh, hydro generation, they do geothermal, mm -hmm. and they also have um, um, wind energy. Mm -hmm. uh, the next uh, big activity in the supply chain of power is transmission. Mm. Uh, transmission is a process of uh, carrying power from generation points uh, for distribution by Kenya Power. Mm -hmm. So the next, uh, which is the last uh, key component in the supply chain is distribution. Mm. And this is now where Kenya Power takes power uh, to the local consumers and also the manufacturers. Okay. So transmission is largely uh, Ketraco, Actually, Ketraco uh, doing high voltage transmission, starting from 132 kilovolts. Uh, generation we have Kenjin. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have IPPs. Uh, we have uh, nuclear power. Uh, when it comes to um, distribution, largely it is uh, Kenya Power, okay. uh, supported by uh, rural electrification. Mm -hmm. Now it's called RERIC. We also have another key player in generation, that is um, a GDC, Geothermal Development Power. Okay. So all those are the key players in the power sector. Okay. Yeah. Bona Fernandez, the, the, the name of the show is Know Your Government, and it's, yeah. uh, one of the main objectives of the show is to help uh, the common monarchy watching us tonight understand how government works and how it impacts them directly on their lives. Mm -hmm. Now, borrowing from your mandate, which you've said is the construction and the management of high voltage uh, power lines. Yeah. Uh, if, if somebody were to ask themselves, mm -hmm. how is this important? How is Ketraco important uh, to their day-to-day -day lives? What would you tell them? Now, first and foremost, when, um, uh, when, when I look at the first component of um, uh, power strengthening, uh, generation is done, mm -hmm. and then this power that is supposed to be uh, are distributed to the local consumers. Mm -hmm. One of the key um, components that Ketraco brings on board is stability of power. Mm -hmm. We have done transmission lines that provide stable power and reliable power because mm -hmm. what consumers want 
is power that is stable. Mm -hmm. What I mean by stable power is power where we don't have um, outages. We don't want to have a situation where you are in a salon or a barber shop and then power goes off. Mm -hmm. So we come and provide that stability aspect so that there is a reliability of power. Okay. You, you are assured that when you go and start up a factory, for example, you will not have any intermittent uh, uh, interferences or disturbances on the power. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the key components that Ketraco brings on board okay. in the supply chain, okay. providing power stability, reliability, and efficiency. Mm -hmm. Now the next advantage is a reduction in the transmission losses. Mm -hmm. When you look at the power uh, tariff, there are many components involved. The first one being generation. Uh, the next component is transmission bits. And then the third component is um, losses. And on losses, we have transmission losses mm -hmm. and distribution losses. Now, the role of Ketraco, in as far as transmission losses is concerned, is to reduce the losses from an industry average of around 3%. At the moment, we are doing uh, almost 2%. Mm -hmm. Now, when the transmission losses have been reduced, ideally the cost of power uh, goes down. Uh, the other issue is um, in terms of um, the power bills. Mm -hmm. By bringing on board renewable energy, for example, uh, electric car, wind, which was energized uh, three years ago, we were able to save the country a lot of money by now consuming more of renewable energy, okay. which is slightly cheaper. Because the tariff component for renewable energy, uh, for example, wind is an average of eight shillings uh, per kilowatt hour. Okay. Compared to thermal energy, that is diesel powered, mm. which costs almost uh, 20 or 30 shillings. 24, five shillings. There about. Mm -hmm per kilowatt hour. So by consuming more of renewable energy, you will definitely slowly retire the thermal energies. And that now becomes a very uh, proactive approach of addressing uh, power losses. Okay. We have gone in areas like, for example, um, Garissa. We've never had a transmission line going to Garissa until Ketraco delivered the first high voltage transmission line. Mm -hmm. That was uh, Kindaruma Mwingi Garissa. Mm -hmm. It's a 132 kilovolts uh, transmission line, mm -hmm. around um, uh, 300 kilometers. When we energized this line, for the first time, Garissa town was being served by power generated uh, through Kindaruma and the power grid. Mm -hmm. So ideally, all the diesel uh, power generators were retired. So that addresses issues around clean energy. In terms of environment, we are now delivering hydropower to Garissa, mm -hmm. and this definitely has a positive impact. Uh, when you go to manufacturing, is a very big component because what manufacturers are looking for is stable power, mm -hmm. so that they can set up uh, factories. Exactly. They can set up special economic zones. Mm -hmm. um, for example, the line we energized, the 485 kilometers Mombasa Nairobi 400 kV, mm. which was energized in 2017. Mm. We have now provided uh, the infrastructure for electrification of SGR. The infrastructure is there. Once the means of transport uh, is done with the feasibility studies, mm -hmm. they can do electrification. And that I can assure you will now encourage the special economic zones okay. uh, so that we can still uh, see people getting employment. So you can clearly see that um, for Kenya to achieve the Vision 2030 dream, you need power as an enabler. Okay. Otherwise, we'll just be talking about blackouts. So that you can clearly see how Ketraco comes in. Mm -hmm. And finally, for the regional interconnection, because some of our lines we are doing are basically connecting Kenya and the neighboring countries. Uh, the business case we have is for the Eastern Electricity Highway Project, mm -hmm. that is uh, Ethiopia, Kenya. This is uh, a 620 kilometer 
high voltage HVDC transmission line. Uh, this line, once it's read, is an interconnector. It has capacity of 2,000 megawatts. Uh, we are going to facilitate regional power trade. Mm -hmm. For example, <coughs> if Ethiopia have excess power, uh, largely because of hydro, they can uh, sell to us that power, of course through a PPA with our counterparts, mm -hmm. power purchase agreements. Mm -hmm. And then we can also export uh, geothermal power to them. So you can clearly see uh, the infrastructure we are providing will facilitate regional power trade, linking the East African power pool to the South African power pool mm -hmm. through our Kenya-Tanzania line, which goes all the way to Zambia and South Africa. So it's, it's, a, it's a big uh, conversation around harnessing regional power trade, which for me it will promote and facilitate regional integration. All right, and uh, whenever we have uh, such programs, uh, whenever we talk about governments and, and the people, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's always about how to improve the people's lives and how to make their lives improve for the better. Yeah. So the biggest question that would come to, very, to the minds of very many viewers tonight, Bonabarasa, would be, why then do we have a scenario where the cost of normal electricity remains high, given mm -hmm. that uh, Katrako came on board since uh, 2008, as, as, you, as you told me, and for, for all those years, the, if you look at the unit cost of a kilowatt hour then mm -hmm. and the unit cost of a kilowatt hour now, it seems mm -hmm. to be slightly a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. why, why do we still have to pay, uh, to, 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 to dig deeper into our pockets to pay for electricity, whereas we have, as you say, the renewable energy plan in our country? Why do we still see that the power bills are still a little bit higher? Now, um, I just want to break it down in terms of um, the cost. Okay. The tariff structure, as oh. I said, has uh, three or four main components. The first major component, which accounts for 70% of the cost, is generation. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, for you to address the cost of power, ideally, using the 80-20 rule, you must address generation. Mm. And I'm very happy that uh, the president has already set up a task force to look at the IPPs. Maybe that's, that could be one of the causes. Okay. Because unless you address 70% component that influences the tariff, then you'll just be scratching the surface. So what am I saying? Number one, we need to go more renewable. Mm right? Mm. Investments in renewable energy because the cost of the tariff is reasonable. Mm. If I can just give you, for example, um, an outline, the cheapest um, um, power mix is hydro, mm. right? Where we are talking about an average of five to six shillings per kilowatt hour. The next cheapest cost is geothermal, right? Mm. Where there's an average of around six to seven shillings per kilowatt hour. The next one is wind, where plus taxes may be around 11 shillings per kilowatt hour. And then, of course, followed by uh, thermal, which is a little bit expensive. Mm. So what am I saying? What government is doing, which uh, we appreciate uh, through our ministry, is to focus more on renewable energy. And that is why there's now a lot of focus on harnessing uh, wind power, on harnessing geothermal power, because it's natural. Mm. And then once the IPPs have been addressed, in terms of you may not necessarily eliminate completely uh, the IPPs, mm. uh, because they have a power purchase agreement uh, for some time, you still need to have them. Uh, so that to address any challenges we have uh, in terms of uh, the natural power that comes from winds in case of intermittent. Mm -hmm. So to answer your, your, your question correctly is um, we address the costs of the generation, largely the IPPs. And again, the next biggest component is the distribution. At the moment, our distribution costs 
amount to almost 20% or 25%. Mm. So we can consciously, again, look at what are the opportunities that are there uh, to address the distribution losses okay. so that there is efficiency in our power distribution. So in my view, when we address that, and then on the transmission bits, uh, we need to address the transmission losses mm. by investing in high voltage transmission lines. For example, where there's an opportunity of doing a 220 kV as opposed to 132 kV, we go for 220 kV. Okay. Where there's an opportunity of doing a 400 kV as opposed to 220 kV, you go for 400 kV. Because the higher the voltage, the lower the transmission losses. Okay. So okay. if you take care of all those three components, I'm very sure in the long run it will be okay. But what Kenyans must understand is what the government is doing is to accelerate investment in energy. Mm. Um, for us to look at and to achieve our expected middle-level economy and achieve our industrialization as per the vision 2030, you need to have stable power, you need to have reliable power, you need to improve on the infrastructure, you need to have affordable health care, mm. you need to have food security, and all those components, energy is an enabler. Let, let us now focus on, um, on the grid, mm -hmm. on the national grid. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I would want to know tonight, how big is our grid? And, mm -hmm. and when are we likely to foresee a scenario where each and every household in the country would have stable and reliable power, as you put it? Now, when you look at um, our national grid at the moment, um, we are talking about uh, over 6,000 kilometers uh -huh. of transmission lines. Uh -huh. uh, out of that, Ketraco have been around for almost 12 years. Uh -huh. uh, we have done 2,500 kilometers. So you can imagine out of, of 6,000, uh -huh. uh, Ketraco has done uh, 2,500, so almost 40% that we have done uh, compared to what existed. Uh -huh. What does it mean? Um, the national grid is growing. And by the growth of the national grid, we are now addressing what we call suppressed demand because in terms of numbers, generation capacity is higher because you're talking about 2,964 megawatts of power mm -hmm. compared to around 19, 1,910 megawatts, which is the peak demand. Mm -hmm. So we need to invest more in transmission lines in order to at least make sure that we address the suppressed demand. Okay. So I'm very confident that um, by addressing the peak demand, which from the numbers in the next maybe one year or two, having more transmission lines, uh, we may get to our peak demand maybe over 2,500 megawatts. Mm -hmm. And this, of course, will give you excess capacity because our generation is slightly higher for us now to do regional power trade. I know the government has a very ambitious program. Mm. Uh, at the moment, in terms of electrification, we're talking about 70%. 70%, yeah. Almost uh, 8 million Kenyans are connected. So when you look at that program, um, together with some of the programs for rural electrification mm. and the last mile connectivity. By the end of 2022, I'm very sure uh, if holding other factors constant, almost all Kenyans will be connected to electricity. Okay. Yeah. Now, given, given this critical role that you, 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 you hold at, 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 at Ketraco, how then would you say that Ketraco, in your day-to-day -day engagements, how have you fit inside President Kenyatta's Big Four agenda yeah. as Ketraco? Yeah, um, as I earlier just mentioned, uh, Ketraco is at the core of um, this Big Four agenda conversation. Mm -hmm. Because for you to have the stable power which is critical for manufacturing, 
You cannot talk about industrialization without stable power. And who provides that stable power is by Ketraco having the necessary infrastructure. Is by Ketraco investing mm -hmm. in those high voltage transmission lines that will guarantee the investors, that will guarantee manufacturers. A very good example is um, when we energized Mombasa Nairobi transmission line mm -hmm. and Suswe Senior mm -hmm. and Earth River. At the moment, seven factories they don't have a problem. Okay. In fact, the number of cement factories has even increased because they're assured of stable power. By the way, the big investors, what they're looking for is not about cost because it's very expensive for them to have power that is not stable. Mm. It's very expensive for them to have power dips every time there's rain. Because you will now be forced to go to alternative sources of power like generation, generators. So if you can guarantee the investors of stable power, I can assure you, areas around Earth River and other special economic zones, they will come up. The issue of affordable health care, you need power mm. for you to invest in hospitals. Mm. Those X-ray machines, you need power for the life support machines. You need stable power. Who is providing stable power is Ketraco. Come to food security, for example. We are investing in our food security by ensuring that we have transmission lines. We are now having transmission lines in those um, as schemes, uh, for example, uh, Galana Gulalu, which is a special uh, uh, generation scheme, irrigation scheme. Uh, when you go to Bura, through our transmission line, uh, starting from Garissa, Bura, Karsen, this mm -hmm. will facilitate those irrigation schemes to have more food. Go to Kisumu, Kano Plains we have now the stable power. Power can even facilitate drilling of water from underground. Very true. And that will definitely support irrigation and agriculture. Um, affordable housing, I've talked about. Issues to do with um, the factors of inputs. Mm. Steel industries, they're looking at stable power. They want to invest here. So when we provide a stable power, mm. we are going to have the cement factors investing here. The generation costs are having been addressed. Okay. The transmission costs have been addressed. You can be sure the cost of cement will come down because uh -huh. it is not expensive with the stable power. Okay. Affordable health care will be achieved. Food security, like now Makweni, is a different story. Mm -hmm. They are able to do their fish, uh, or rather their fruits, uh, manufacturing. Uh, when you go to uh, areas like Isumu, the fish farming will be enhanced. Dairy farming will be enhanced because at least you have power. You, you can store your food in a fridge. So you can clearly see how uh, stable power is a key contributor to the big four agenda. Big four agenda. Yeah. And, and if, if somebody uh, is, 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 is listening to our conversation or watching our conversation tonight and they're asking themselves, given this critical uh, mandate that you, that you continue to take up at Ketraco, yeah. what then would be your three biggest challenges and maybe three biggest successes in the period that you've been in existence? Now, um, one of the biggest challenges we have here is um, uh, way of compensation, mm. where we get a lot of assistance from landowners, okay. uh, especially um, the area where we're trying to acquire way mm. So it's a, it's a conversation that we have had with um, key stakeholders, for example, National Land Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a government unit that is empowered uh, to acquire well for us. So that comes in very handy. 
we also do a lot of stakeholder engagement with communities, mm -hmm. national governments, uh, through the county commissioners, etc. Okay. Uh, not forgetting the county governments as well. At least just to, to, to make sure that there is a lot of sensitization uh, from the communities to appreciate the importance of providing relief. And it's not for free because we pay for it. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we compensate the landowners, but some of them, they ask for exorbitant mm -hmm. compensation rates. So it becomes a problem because we spend a lot of time negotiating mm -hmm. and that ultimately becomes a cost, right? Um, the next big challenge we have is vandalism okay. of our infrastructure. And I'm very happy that um, the national government has taken it as a very serious aspect by uh, bringing issues to do with um, uh, enhancing the, the penalties. By classifying vandalism as an economic fine uh, and also enhancing the penalties in the Energy Act 2019 to a period of uh, 10 years imprisonment or 20 million Kenya shillings or both. Mm. I think that has kind of deterred uh, not really eliminated per se, but mitigated uh, the issues of vandalism. Of course, the other challenge that we have is um, the competing initiatives on government resources, especially counterpart funding. We are aware that government has um, many competing uh, initiatives, especially on exchequer funding. So you largely find, um, most often than not, you may not get money as and when you need it, especially for the last two years when we've had this COVID thing. Mm -hmm. It's kind of slowed down um, collection by uh, KRA. So that has kind of uh, also affected uh, disbursement to utilities, which eventually also affects uh, the implementation of projects. But by and large, I just want to appreciate um, what our ministry is doing, uh, together with um, um, the national government, especially national treasury, to address uh, the issues around uh, vandalism and also to address issues around exchequer funding because at least we are given priority in terms of disbursements. Okay, and your successes, and, and, and as you give us your successes, kindly you give us your parting shots as well. Um, one of my success uh, stories is um, at least in Nairobi, you'll agree with me, mm. uh, we've not experienced um, any serious national blackouts. I know people take it for granted, but it's not by default, it's by design. Mm -hmm. Having stabilized power within Nairobi, having stabilized a underground cable at Embakasi, having energized um, Susue Senior Line as our alternative to Nairobi North, having energized Mombasa Nairobi, mm -hmm. we've now have a lot of uh, we call it N-1, alternative uh, route of serving Nairobi. So Nairobi being uh, the epicenter of the regional power, I want to uh, take credit. I know sometimes people cannot <laughs> appreciate you, but it's good um, uh, to take credit where it serves. Mm -hmm. This has been achieved because of Ketraco, uh, energizing the high voltage lines within Nairobi and the environment. There's something called Nairobi Ring. We have some substations that we have constructed around Nairobi Metropolitan. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's a very big success story. It has improved security issues. It has improved uh, issues around uh, manufacturing and generally um, the safety situation. Um, the next success story that um, I just want to highlight is the growth of Ketraco. When you experience a growth in the infrastructure of over 70 percent, remember when we came on board we had 3,400 kilometers mm. of transmission lines. Mm. At the moment we are talking about 2,580 kilometers. When you do your maths that's over 70 percent growth. We are talking about an asset base of almost 300 billion Kenya shillings. In the next two or three years, we shall be competing the KCBs of this world in terms of the asset base.
So for me, that is a phenomenal growth, mm. and I'm very proud to be part of that. And then, of course, uh, finally, um, Kenyans are now starting to enjoy the benefits of Ketraco projects, especially in the rural areas. Mm. We have <laughs> energized over 10 or 15 projects, starting from 132 kV. When you go to Kisi, we have done Kisi Awendo, the stable power. We have done Eldora de Kitale, the stable power. We have done Bumia Serangala, with the stable power. Go to Ishiara Kien, we have done a line there. Kindaruma Mwingi, we have done a line. We are on the map as the first transmission company mm. to evacuate the largest wind generation in Africa of 310 megawatts of power from Lake Trukana all the way from Marsabit up to Suswa, traversing seven counties of Marsabit, Samburu, we have Laikipia, we have Nakuru, we have Nyaururu, we have Gajiado. All this for me is a milestone. Okay. Lastly, of course, we are also happy that we have put Ketraco on the map with regard to fiber optic. Mm. We have our OBGW, that is the optical ground cable, which is installed on our fiber network. And we are now providing the telcos an opportunity to light the fiber. In the next um, two to three years, fiber will be the big thing. So Ketraco will be the key player and the key actor in the fiber business. Thank you. All right, and there you have it. Uh, thank you very much, Buona Baraza Fernandez, for your time tonight. Uh, from this conversation, what I'm gathering is that this conversation has actually uh, switched on the awareness switch about the importance of power in our life and even uh, how we normally take it for granted. And the reason why you are having a reliable power and fewer blackouts is because of what Ketraco uh, is doing. And thank you very much, and we wish you all the best as you continue with executing your mandate at Ketraco. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That has been my time. My name is Kenneth Kazungu on Know Your Government. See you soon, and see you on the next one. Stay safe and be blessed.